Hey there, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back once again to the channel. I'm bringing to you another interview. I've been on a roll lately, and today I am joined by none other than MLW's very own, the God Queen, Delmi Exo. Hey, Delmi. Hey, Denise. How's it going? It's going good. You know, I'm so happy to have you on here on the show because to me, it's always so exciting to talk to a talent that is up and coming, that's young, that's full of life and just, you know, ready to like really grab the bull by the horns and, you know, do stuff in, in wrestling. It's so cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you saying young because a lot of people <laughs> do think that I'm much older um, and I'm always Oh, I'm still like very much in my 20s. <laughs> yes, girl, you know, enjoy it, man. Your 20s, you know, it's funny because I was so afraid of turning 30 uh -huh. and I was like terrified of it, right? And then 30, it's already been like the best year of my life. But if I could go back to like my, my, you know, my 20s, I wish I knew that, you know, instead of being fearful of it. I think what helped me was I grew up watching 13 going on 30. Yes. So I was led to believe that 30 is your prime. So all my friends who are 30, they're like, oh, I'm so old. I'm like, no, this is your prime. <laughs> like, I'm allowed to be the best up right now. Like, I'm allowed to make all the mistakes, though. When I hit 30, I want to have it figured out. I want to be cruising. <laughs> exactly. I feel you, man. But, oh, my God. Like, I feel like you're, uh, you know, things are really, this is just the beginning for you. You know, things are about to really take off for you. So let's kind of start things off with, you know, what's been going on with you? Because about, what was it, like a week ago, uh, Court Bauer made the announcement on Busted Open Radio that you uh, officially signed with me major league wrestling and I can only imagine how exciting that is for you because I know that for wrestlers you know it's the goal is to get signed and go someplace and really be some have some place to call your home where you can show people what your uh, skill level is and all of that so uh tell me for you I want to start off there how did it feel to get signed by MLW and how did the whole uh, thing come about um so I was actually brought in at the end of 2020 with my sister as a tag team. Uh, so we did get to work with them and they were talking about building their women's division then. And so it is nice coming full circle, like two years later now and like bringing, getting brought back and actually getting offered a contract with them. Um, it was pretty easy of a conversation to have with them. Um, and I do feel like they did seem genuinely excited to bring me in and, grow with me and I'm so excited to grow with the company and grow the women's division um and be a part of that journey because I was there when it like first started and so it's cool to see how much room there is and that I get to make like a huge impact um MLW is one of those places that like they just are so nice and genuine with the talent in terms of like creative and so I feel like it's just a breath of fresh air and I'm really excited to grow and be a part of it all that's really exciting, man, because like you said, you get a chance to, you know, grow and, uh, you know, we, you know, we're also starting to see more women come on board with MLW for their uh, women's division. You know, you got Taya in there. I was just talking uh, previously with Becca. And so there's a lot of different people that you can kind of mix it up with. So, uh, you know, I want to just kind of rewind a little bit because I know that, you know, getting signed and getting the opportunity to be somewhere is always really special. But I want to get an idea of how this whole journey starts started for you you know what was Delmi's start in pro wrestling like tell us about that so for me as a child pro wrestling was just always on um uh, my sister and my dad my sister's seven years older so she watched it with my dad growing up and then when I was brought into the family <laughs> surprise she just kind of had control of the remote and so we were watching wrestling um and she kind of raised me on like playing the video games, you know, watching Raw, watching SmackDown and all that. And so growing up, we always wanted to be a tag team because we were just inseparable. And when she decided to sign up for wrestling school, I went in with her at the same day. And that same day I signed up and like went to practice. <laughs> I wasn't dressed for practice at all. <laughs> Thankfully, I always like wear like casual clothes, but I got in the ring that day and I've been uh, training ever since I started when I was 17 going into senior year. So wow. I'm 
almost going to be a 10 year vet now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh my God. Okay. So I want to touch on a bunch of stuff. And the first thing that I want to ask you is, you know, you mentioned going in there and training with your sister, uh, Ashley, who I know you guys did a bunch of, uh, you know, teaming with you, you guys teamed a lot, to, you know, throughout the years and whatnot. Um, so I do want to ask you, you know, I feel like for a lot of people going into this journey by themselves, it can be very hard. You face different challenges and whatnot, but you're going in there with your sister. So what was the experience like kind of growing in the business with your sister honestly it was probably the best case scenario for me I'm really fortunate that all my travel experiences I had my older sister with me and she was always like the protective one and so it did like keep me safe from a lot of different like horrible experiences that I could have had um I always traveled with either her and we always like would meal prep stuff together or whenever we would go to like the gas stations it was funny because we would always get like so many different beverages like an energy drink a Gatorade Zero water we were like the best travel buddies um she also is very forgetful so I was always like the mother of the two where I was like I have the makeup I have the makeup we were like I have everything <laughs> That's so cute. It's like you guys balance each other out. You know, she like takes care of you. You make sure you don't forget stuff. It's a nice little dynamic. Yeah, she was the tough one. And I was like the mother hen. So it was always cool, like doing that with her and then training with her. It was fun because she's so much smaller, even though she's the oldest. So I get to practice all my power moves on her. <laughs> and then she got <laughs> all her lucha stuff on me so I was like, why is it always like that why is it always that the older sister is the short one and then the younger sister tends to be just taller I feel like that happens no. so much yeah my boyfriend and his younger brother are the same way his brother and my boyfriend's not small by any means but his brother's so much bigger than him and has so much more size it's like <laughs> well you should have been the wrestler <laughs> right isn't it like you're like what like what did what did you eat what did mom feed you that was differently than i had you know what happened there <laughs> um so okay so you know you mentioned being 17 going into wrestling school uh what was the journey where did you i mean what was that experience like and what did um you know what school did you go to and all of that so my experience was completely different because back then there wasn't too many wrestling schools like there are now. So I ended up training in a barn. Where oh my God. I, yeah, it was kind of like an open ring. And the guy who trained me, uh, his name is Doug Summers. And he actually did not want to train people because he knew how like scary the business could be. And so when we came in and we were like, oh, we heard you like were trained properly and like we would like to be trained um, for wrestling, he just was very protective of how he brought us into locker rooms and like how we were talked to by promoters. He made sure anytime we did get bookings that we were paid and stuff like that. So I'm very thankful of that situation. I think if I went into a wrestling school at 17, I think it would have been too intimidating for me at that age. And maybe I wouldn't have like followed through. The sport itself is like very physically taxing. And I remember like I wasn't built for wrestling when I started off. I did not have any muscle. I wasn't like a super athletic kid. And my mom just always telling me like, you know, like if you quit, like it's okay. Like no one's going to judge you and no one's going to make fun of you. And I was just like, it's okay, mom. <laughs> just like all the ice packs on me. <laughs> like I can do this. <laughs> I love that your mom said that, though, because it is one of those things when you try something that is so taxing on your body, you could be like, oh, my God, I can't quit now. But it's kind of nice that your mom was kind of like, hey, if you want to quit, it's OK. No one's going to make fun of you and all of that. Uh, so, you know, you mentioned that it was a little bit of a challenge. You know, talk to talk to me about I've never known anybody who started training uh, in a barn. What was that like? Like, do you guys have the whole setup? Did you guys have a ring? How did that work out? So we did have a whole like ring, like the ring was um, a fully functioning ring. It is noted to be one of the stiffest rings in New England. Like it would used to travel and be at shows, um, but the spring inside is all rusted. So it didn't have like a good bump to it anymore. And everyone was like, who found out we were training in that ring? They were like, oh my God, that's the stiffest ring in New England. And that might be true because when I did go over to Japan, those rings are supposed to be stiffer. And I was like, this is cake. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've done this before. Um, and then after a while, the bottom rope ended up breaking. 
So I was forced uh, to learn up and overs, which is that movement you do out of the corner where you jump over and like someone usually sneaks underneath you. Normally for women, because we have like a smaller chest muscle area, we use the bottom rope to give us an extra leverage. I was forced to learn how to do that movement without the bottom rope jump. So <laughs> it like made me better at that. And it was awful at first. I was like, man, like... <laughs> <laughs> you're like what <laughs> oh my god but it's cool though because that ended up helping you yeah it did end up helping me I had to just like gain upper body strength <laughs> I love that though I love that the unique circumstances ended up kind of shaping you and some of your experience so you mentioned you know going to Japan uh you know where tell us about some of the parts of the world that you've like wrestled in uh some of your favorites what those those experiences were like especially in Japan because you know I've never been to Japan I don't know what you know what what that experience might be like how was all of that so going to Japan for wrestling was actually my second time I got to go to Japan. The first time was with my school. I went as a youth ambassador. I studied Japanese language in high school. It was actually the only reason I went to that high school. It was a college prep high school, very hard to get into. And I studied just so I could learn Japanese because that's how much I like love Japanese culture and stuff. And so going there, uh, it was the summer before senior year and we only went for 10 days, but that was such like a life changing experience for me. I just was able to experience everything that like, I like grew up, you know, like studying and like almost worshiping. Um, and when I got into wrestling that summer, I was like, I want to go to Japan. Like that's my goal for wrestling. And so finally accomplishing that and going to train with Marvelous was so cool. I got to live in the dojo and like our school was like right there in the garage that they had set up and everything was just like so surreal. Like being in Japan, like everything just looks HD. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but like everything just looks so like bright and live and um it was like one of those cool things that like, oh my God, like I'm experiencing this. Like, how did I get here? Um, my first match there was really cool because like I do my like little ritual that I do before matches, which is um, what I would do at cheer. And I would just like do this and do like one, two, two. <laughs> and like that was like, whoa, am I really doing this right now? Like, how did I get myself in this situation? Um, like, I was the kid with ice packs on me. And now I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to go wrestle in front of people. In a foreign in country. Foreign country. Um, Japan's definitely like my top country that I've wrestled in. But before that, I would constantly go up and down to Canada, which would be like a 10 hour commute one way with my boyfriend and our best friend ZPB, who also wrestles. And that was always fun because it would be such a long car ride. And we have like, the best karaoke sessions ever. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so there's so much I need to ask you. First of all, go to karaoke song. What's what's your what's your what's your vibe? What's your flavor? Fat Bottom Girls by Queen. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I got my go-to. Oh my God. Okay. So you know, you you've kind of picked, you know, you wrestled in Canada, obviously, here in the United States, Japan. Uh, you know, you're going to all of these places. Where do you feel you grew the most as a competitor? Uh, and what do you think it is about yourself that landed you the opportunity to get signed by MLW? I would definitely say probably America because I wrestled here more frequently. Um, Japan definitely made me better in terms of skill. I learned a lot of different things over there and I learned, uh, different like strengths physically. Um, like I learned how to push my body past its limits, but America is definitely where I learned the most like psychology because it's not something that they can really teach you over there in Japan about psychology. It's more felt versus in America, like actually hearing from people and uh, learning under different people and attending different seminars and working different wrestlers. That's definitely something that like I picked up the most with, um, coming back into 2021, I was able to like learn from JD Drake a lot. He was someone who I was always like around in locker rooms and he's always willing to like give advice to everyone. Um, 
if he's on a show, he'll watch every match and he'll go up to you and like tell you what you did wrong and tell you what you're improving on. And he definitely helped me out the most during like the pandemic era. He was always at like tapings that I was on and that helped push past that little bit of room that I needed to be able to like finally step out and step into the next level of like my, I want to say like skill, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get it. I love that. I love that you explained that too, because, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, you even just mentioning the differences between learning psychology in the United States and in Japan. Uh, you know, I've never heard anybody else tell me that, uh, you know, in these interviews when they, you know, they've wrestled different places. So I find that like a very a unique kind of thing. So I do also wanted to ask you because um, I'm always fascinated by, uh, you know, when it comes to women and when it comes to pursuing a career in wrestling. So for you, like, what was some of your experiences with some of the other women when you first started getting into the business was it hard to get yourself some matches on the card uh what was it what was it like to try and get booked on shows it was really rough when uh me and Ashley first started because it was just me and her and we did have Davian who is a New England staple um over here but we weren't always able to work shows with her if at all. Um, she was kind of doing her thing in chaotic and we were trying to like get an opportunity to even wrestle on the show. Like we were looked at as, Oh, it's probably going to be like a bad match. Like just because we were women and we were trained properly, but just for the sake that we were women, we were put on like fair shows and like stuff like that. And a lot of those first few matches were definitely rough because the women that we would train wouldn't always be like, train properly and then there was this like small plateau that my area experienced where if you hit hard it wasn't a good thing back then versus now like you see so many more women having like a strong style base automatically and like it's encouraged because it's understood more that because of our small like stature we have to like make things look bigger and in order to do that it's going to come in a little more snug um Back then, during when I first broke out, if you wrestled like that, like you got heat and you were just like unsafe. That was like a term that you were used. You were like not someone who should be brought in. Uh, Davey was one of the first people who like helped us break that mold. Um, Lish was that way too, but she wasn't really around and like wrestling with us at the time. She was kind of like, taking some time off. So we couldn't like work with her as often as like Davy had. Um, so it was nice being able to work with Davy and, and like her being like, no, like you should hit me hard. Like this is how the guys hit me in class. And like, I wouldn't hold back. And then when we did start working other shows, I know Thunder Rose and Holodeads, one of the matches that we got to have where we finally learned how to like just slug. And like, that was like so cool to me. Cause like, we were just like, like beating the crap out of each other like chops were stiff but like it was like cool because like we were all close so we were like oh, all right like and it started to click and like make things make sense for us I love that you mentioned Thunder Rosa and Holodead because they are like, you know, they're so great, both of them, and they're so hard hitting. And I love watching them wrestle, whether it's separately in a tag team, it doesn't matter. They're very enjoyable to see. But I love that you explained that because it is this, you know, the, this, this uh, double edged sword for women, especially in the Indies. Is, and I hear this a lot because, you know, it's hard to get a spot on the card. Uh, and you do get seen as less, unfortunately, because they're like, oh, you're women, you know, this and that for whatever reasons, prejudices and all of that. But things are changing now where, uh, we are seeing more of a demand in terms of wanting to see women on the card. Uh, for you, when do you feel you started noticing that change where you started to notice you were getting more bookings and more opportunities? Um, I want to say maybe like 2018, 2019 was when things started picking up. Uh, there was like definitely like the year where me and Ashley felt like we didn't have a weekend at all and we were just like sacrificing like if it was a birthday like sorry can't be there like anything we were just like taking bookings because our goal was to make it on the pwi and then when we found out we didn't make it it was just like oh like okay what else can we like sacrifice and cross off the list and then the following year i believe it was 2019 and we had just like every weekend we were like 
picking up bookings. Like we were doing the most amount of work. Uh, we were going to like Texas for touring. We got brought into California for a couple of tours. Uh, there was like the SummerSlam summit event that they did in Canada. And that was pretty cool. We got to go in with shimmer. Um, it was cool. Cause like bull Nakano was backstage watching the show. And I like knew that I had to do a missile drop kick. And when I came, when I came back from the curtain, she was like, that was a really good drop kick. And I was like, yes. You're like, I made it. That's it. That's all I needed. Take off my boots right now. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. See, I love that. I love to hear that because it is like, it does feel like a very recent change where you finally started to see more women uh, get booked on the show. So I do also want to ask you because earlier you mentioned, uh, you know, you grew up a wrestling fan. Your sister was getting you involved in that. Uh, who were some of your inspiration, some of your favorite people um, growing up? Um, we love the Hardy Boys. Yeah. <laughs> and we love the Guerreros. Um, Eddie Guerrero and Chavo. They were so funny in their vignettes. Um, I thought I was going to be a comedy wrestler when I started, but I have it in me, unfortunately. <laughs> I can't portray it in the ring. Um, they're definitely like some of my favorites. Ashley loved Edge, and I loved Cena when that whole feud started. So it was really funny because she was such like, uh heel lover she loved all the bad guys her first wrestler was like razor ramon i loved triple h because i thought he was so cool <laughs> i feel you i feel you i was a yeah. triple h fan too i was like oh i was so on board you know uh and so i do also want to ask you because he mentioned jd drake being one of those people that you uh you know took some advice from and was easy to pick his brain uh who are some of the other people that you have really just kind of connected with that you feel uh, helped you out either as a mentor or just in general um, Perry Von Vicious is someone who I consider my trainer now. So my trainer ended up retiring. My re original, re original trainer, Doug Summers, ended up retiring from wrestling in like 2018. And so from there, I started like learning from Perry Von Vicious. And he was from New England originally. And he ended up moving to California for a bit where he trained with the, uh, I believe it's big time wrestling over there okay it was one of the head trainers over there he actually ended up working with um bailey during her first early time period so when he came over he was just like a huge help and i like picked his brain he's someone who i trust with like advice not only in wrestling but like in life because he's just so knowledgeable and like he like just assesses every little detail on things um, he's the human monster chart for anyone who wants to look him up. <laughs> I would say that to people. I'm like, yeah, the monster chart. That's, that's my trainer. <laughs> that's a great name. I would definitely like, be like, okay, let me look and see what's going on. Why did they call this guy the human monster truck? That's great. Uh, I do also want to ask Delmi because, uh, you know, we mentioned how there's just so much more happening now with women across all of these different promotions, you know, it doesn't matter which promotion you're talking about. You can mention a handful of women who are killing it. So for you tell me, like, who are some of the people like right now that you like admire their career that you would like to mirror, uh, you know, you're like, that's what I would want to be like in a year two years years five years like that's the ideal vision do you have anybody in mind um I would say Sasha Banks because of how much she's like taken her career into her hands um she's actually from the New England area so she's someone who I've just always looked up to um especially like having missed her by like a few years like oh, I could have like <laughs> I could have known her um and yeah she just has like such like an amazing legacy like at every point of something that she's done with history I'm always like wow like what a great career and then she does something else that's like completely incredible and I'm just like oh my god what a great career <laughs> like this, this hey <laughs> you're like that's the blueprint right there that's the blueprint <laughs> like wait wait I'm trying to catch up <laughs> I love that I love that. that's a good answer I think Sasha's a great one for sure and everything that she's doing has been phenomenal uh, so Delmi I do have one last and final question for you is is um you know we mentioned you just started with MLW you still have you know the whole world at your feet but what is it that you're looking to accomplish within MLW and you know even from there on like what are your goals right now I'm definitely looking to be on top of the featherweight division. Um, 
I love how fresh it's starting and I love how we have so much room to start writing our own history. And honestly, I would love to be able to hold the women's world championship. Like that's such a dream of mine to be able to hold my own title. I've held tag team gold before. And I think it's time for me to be able to like stand on my own and hold my own championship. You're like, I'm getting it going, you know? That's so cool, man. Uh, Delmi, it was so nice to chat with you. Uh, seriously, I'm getting to know you, and I'm excited to see what you do in MLW and continue to do in your career. Uh, before we go, please let the people know where they can support you, where they can watch you, and all of that good stuff. Yeah, of course. Um, my name is Delmi Exo. That's E-X-O. And you can follow me at Delmi Exo on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Perfect. I'm going to post all of those links in the description box below so you guys can give Delmi some love. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, don't forget to subscribe.